friends, welcome to EduTap. So welcome to the Everyday at 5 series for IBPS AFO 2018-19 brought to you by EduTap. Now this is a regular series wherein we will take up very small topics which are important from the perspective of examination. And these topics will be discussed in the form of MCQs and certain other explanations as well. Now this is lecture number 2 and today we are going to study about horticulture crops and among those horticulture crops we have picked up on apple first, a fruit crop. So in lecture one, what we did it, we, uh, we saw certain MCQs and we were discussing the answers for it. So while we were discussing the answers, there are a couple of other questions as well that we had put forth. So today, while going through the explanation, we shall come up with the answers for those questions as well that were asked in the previous lecture, that is lecture one. So let us begin. Okay, so uh, quickly we'll go through the points. Okay, so you can see here on your screen that first thing, uh, it is a temperate crop, uh, right? So this also we had discussed in detail through one of the questions in the previous lecture. Okay, the other next important point is that apple ranks fourth in the most widely produced fruits in the world okay so you can say the first being banana orange and grape and next comes apple okay so you can just see the importance of it though they're not going to ask you direct question based upon this but you can see how commercially viable and important this particular crop is right and which country in the world is the largest apple producing country it is china right and one other important fact is that himachal pradesh in india is known as the apple bowl of india so this is one uh, fact that you need to know okay so apple is climactic fruit okay so that is it uh, keeps ripening even after you harvest it so based on the time or the mode of uh, ripening in fruits you can see that either they can be climactic or non-climatric so when you talk about climatic these particular kind of fruits they keep um, uh, ripening even after they are harvested okay and non-climatic they stop harvest uh, they stop ripening once they are harvested okay so this is something that you need to uh, keep in mind then you can see here about a botanical name it is malice pumila okay so uh, you can just keep in mind because sometimes they can just give in the options the botanical name and you should not get confused because we just refer to it as apple very commonly so you need to know that it has a botanical name that is malice pumila right and family it belongs to rosaceae and again climate is temperate we have already seen in the first point as well right now one more point let me make it clear when I say harvesting we are meaning that when the fruits are plucked from the trees okay. So what happens is uh, usually because uh, apples are a climatic fruit that means uh, they uh, tend to ripen even after they are plucked. So what it is done is usually the plucking takes place before uh, is keeping in mind such a way till the time they reach the consumers they, they appropriately get ripe enough okay. And one other important point that you need to understand that uh, there's one hormone which is related to ripening of fruits that is called ethylene okay so just keep this in mind so you have plant hormones and growth regulators right so whenever you talk about fruit ripening is it is associated with the liberation of eth ethylene okay so just keep this one important fact you might also get a question on this right Okay, so here you can see some of the important parameters that we will discuss. So here you can see what is the optimum temperature which is required during the growing season. So we had seen that uh, this particular question was also asked as part of lecture 1. So this is the answer here. The optimum temperature range is 21 to 24 degrees Celsius. So kindly keep this point in mind. Okay, annual rainfall. When you talk about rainfall, it is 100 to 125 centimeters. Okay, so annually we are talking about this. Uh, then you talk about soil. What kind of soil is uh, required when you want uh, to uh, the apples to grow? Okay, the answer is loamy soils which are rich in organic matter. So keep this in mind. Next, the pH level which is required is 5.5 to 6.5. Okay, and there's one other important point that if you say the most suitable or generally suitable soil uh, for the growth of apples is le red laterite soil. Okay, 
so it is brick in color this particular soil and uh, then you can see the growing states in india so we have just now seen that himachal pradesh is known as apple ball of india right so obviously himachal pradesh is a important state for growth of apples and you have jammu and kashmir right kashmiri apples are very famous then you have uttarakhand and arunachal pradesh so north eastern areas because you require a certain amount of elevation you can see here 1200 to 2000 meters okay so these are the states then there was one other question that we were discussing uh, regarding the propagation method so we are understood that uh, the uh, there's asexual methods of propagation like budding and grafting so in apple we saw that uh, the type of budding which is used is shield budding right and i uh, i put forth a question regarding what type of grafting is involved okay so you can see it is tongue grafting whip and tongue grafting so kindly keep this in mind so this is the answer for the second question that we were discussing previously obviously right okay now when you're talking about grafting and budding what are these techniques basically as uh, we have discussed in the previous lecture of ours that this is one of the kinds of asexual reproduction or vegetative propagation as it is called so what you, they usually do is they join parts of from two or more plants okay so that they appear to grow as a single plant so here you can have a look at this picture so uh, now when you are trying to join two parts for example the upper part okay is usually called cion you can see here this is the upper part then you're going to uh, use the lower part of another plant okay which has the root system okay so this particular lower part on which the cion is attached is known as the root stock okay so basically two uh, parts you can say the upper portion cion right the uh, below portion which contains the entire root system is known as stalk right so now you can see in this picture how beautifully the cion is placed inside the stalk such that they are uh, they start to grow as one plant in future okay so they are tied together okay you can see here the cutting is done accordingly so these are some of the techniques that are used in term of vegetative propagation when you talk about budding now from the name itself you can say that here bud is involved okay so a bud is taken from one plant and this particular bud grows on another right so these are the two important techniques kindly keep this in mind and under these techniques there are various ways in which it can be done okay so just now we saw that for apple which kind of budding is done shield budding right and in case of grafting you use tongue grafting which is also known as whip and tongue grafting okay now other important points coming to the planting season so usually it is planted in january and february right and usually the harvesting season is august september to october november okay harvesting is when the fruits are plucked and we have just now seen one more thing that uh, climatic fruits are those fruits that continue to ripen even after they are plucked or harvested right then you come to the planting method okay so uh, we were having a look at the planting space it uh, i had put for that question previously in lecture 1 so let me tell you that the space is uh, 10 meter into 10 meter you can see here in the picture okay so uh, this is nothing but plant to plant and row to row spacing right so you can see here the, it is equal spacing between row to row and plant to plant now talking about planting method usually square or hexagonal method is followed okay in the case of valleys so if you see here okay so here you can see these are slopes and these are valley areas so here they usually go for square and hexagonal system and when you talk about slopes they are usually using contour method okay where a boundary is created by planting the uh, trees uh, like a boundary line okay so along the boundary line in fact okay now yield if you see it ranges between 10 to 20 kg per tree per year okay just a fact just keep this in mind now see friends these planting methods and all we have elaborately dealt upon these things as part of our video lectures where we explain each and every planting method that is there like what is square hexagonal okay then you have rectangular and for what kind of plants they are used okay so these kind of things are uh, very elaborately covered there but as part part of this series we will uh, showcase the important points that you need to remember when it comes to the examination right 
okay now here you can see major diseases this is very important you need to know all the diseases at least the major ones so what you can do is maybe you can pause this video try to read these diseases once twice thrice when you read it thrice uh, at least you will be able to remember when you see the options in the examination right because it is not very easy to memorize everything as such so what i usually say is if you start revising things at least you will have those things at the backdrop and whenever you are seeing a question after having a look at the options you will definitely be able to answer okay for example apple scab uh, powdery mildew this particular disease affects a lot of fruit crops in fact you have collar rot apple canker okay you have uh, sclerotius blight you have crown gall die back disease is again important okay next you can see there are various disorders okay so uh, in apples there are three distinct fruit drops that are experienced so early drop okay because of lack of pollination okay june drop due to moisture stress okay pre harvest drop due to development of ethylene so now again understand we were referring that when it comes to fruit ripening immediately you need to remember ethylene okay because uh, the secretion or the release of ethylene leads to the ripening of the fruit okay so if there is excessive or there's development of ethylene in the plant then automatically uh, there is a pre harvest drop that is before the intended season or before the intended period where you need to pluck the uh, particular crop uh, a fruit it um, leads to a situation where before that itself you can see that there is a drop in the fruits from the trees okay so these are abnormal things because of various other reasons that you can uh, clearly see on your screens right okay now one other important aspect the insect pests okay so uh, as you can see uh, there are sanjo scale white scale bully apple aphid and blossom thrips so these are some of the pests that actually affect the quality or lead to major diseases in the uh, apple fruit crop right now this is very important friends uh, it is not easy to memorize these things so again i'm trying to tell you that uh, try to uh, have a look at it once twice thrice at least you will be able to pick the correct options okay so when you talk about the various varieties you can see that there are early varieties there are medium varieties okay early means uh, varieties yield during april may medium during june july and late varieties during august september so kindly be familiar with this these names that are there okay for example if you see the medium varieties there is a variety which is red delicious okay now this is most important variety in india okay do you have macintosh which is a leading variety of canada okay so at least have familiarity with these names now when you talk about hybrid varieties we had put a question uh, this was suneheri was there in the options when we were discussing question in lecture 1 so apart from this uh, there were there was a question that uh, what are the other two varieties that you can name so you can see a whole list out here okay you have lal ambri okay you have ambred okay you have a chobati anupam so now try to make sure that at least you know the cross uh, resulting these kind of hybrid varieties okay now you have clonal rootstock varieties okay so again we had seen that when you talk about rootstock it is the lower at the bottom portion which is used to club with cion to get a new plant this is one of the grafting methods so for that also you have certain varieties when you have grafted certain plants and got the result okay so now dwarf varieties are very famous so always remember m9 and m27 okay now uh, don't do not forget this m9 m27 draw varieties of apple okay you also have other clonal rootstock varieties like m26 m7 mm106 mm11 right then you have scab resistant varieties we had seen that apple scab is a disease a kind of a disease that affects apples so there are certain varieties that are resistant to this particular disease so you can see here that's prima priscilla jona free florina mac free all these are names okay so once or twice if you read these names automatically you will be able to identify that yes this is one of the varieties of apple fruit right now coming to grading so there are six grades of apple and what are the system on the basis of which these grades are uh, formed it is based on fruit color shape quality appearance right 
then coming to storage certain important points so after you harvest this particular crop apple can actually be stored for a period of 4 to 8 months okay and it is kept in cold storage at a temperature of nearly 1.120 degree celsius and the relative humidity being 85 to 90 percentage okay some of the important points so friends with this we have come to the end of this particular lecture 2 so what we have done is we have come across certain uh, questions that we had discussed as part of lecture 1 and apart from that also there are various other things that we have discussed so it would take you a while to actually come uh, into terms with all those uh, all these information that we have provided but if you just watch this video once or twice and even if you uh, have a look at the ppt uh, that you will at least be able to remember it when it comes to the examination so just before we finish quickly the courses which edutap is offering for ibps cfo 2018 19 so we have a full video course plus tests okay and wherein we have explained each chapter in a comprehensive manner and the course can be bought for rupees 2499 and this price is available only for the first 100 subscribers of our course then you have a separate test series as well and that uh, contains 25 mock tests that is full length mock tests and 25 sectional tests so this particular test series can be bought for rupees 1499 So friends in case you have any query you can drop us a mail at hello@edutab.co.in you can also give us a call at 8146207241 So friends with this we have come to the end of this particular lecture too so if you found this video useful kindly like subscribe and share please do let us know your feedback because only then we would be able to judge like whether this series is helping you guys or not right so we really need to know your feedback as well and if you want to download the pdf of this particular session you can go to edutap's telegram channel the link for the channel is placed on your screen plus you can also find this link in the description box that of this particular video and Till then friends thank you so much keep learning happy learning